To create an API call in Power Automate Desktop, you go up to Actions and find an Invoke Web Service. Drag it in. Then we need to fill out the parameters and here you will have some documentation for your API. If you don't have an API documentation ready, just follow my example. We will use the Star Wars API, which you will find here at swappy.dev. Up in the right corner, you will see the documentation. Click that. Here, that will be an introduction and it will be more advanced once we scroll. We will move into the getting started and here we will see a URL. Mark it and copy it. Then we go back to Power Automate Desktop because here in the URL, we just paste in the URL. The method that is get, usually when we want to take some data from an API, we will use the get. If we want to send data, then we will use post and we have several other method options. For now, just use the get. Then we will have the accept. The answer from this API comes back in a format and here we need to specify it. Usually that is JSON that will also be apparent in your API documentation. If we are posting something, that means that we sent data here in the headers and body, then those data we also need to specify. It. We will not send data to the API this time. So this one is a bit redundant, but you will usually use JSON. Then we want to move into the advanced because per default, this encode request body is enabled. That is, um, it will be sent in base 64, but we want to send it in its original form, which is a JSON. So here we will untick that and I will collapse the advanced. We will produce three variables, or so this action will produce three variables. The web service response headers, which is metadata about the response. Then we will have the actual response where we will have our data and we will have a status code, for example, 200, that will be a success. For now, we are getting information about planets and the number one planet. We can change this one to have information about different planets. And that's usually how an API works. We want to get some information about some item, which is item number one here. Then I can click save. We can test it by clicking run up here. And over to the right, you will see the status code 200. That is a success. Down here in the web service response headers, you can double click. You will see some metadata. Fine. And in the web service response, you will see name, tattooing, rotation period, and a lot of other data about our planet. This data we want to use. This is in a JSON format. In case you don't see this is a JSON, you can usually see it's a JSON because we have the curly bracket here in the start and in the end. Then we have a lot of key value pairs, for example, the name, colon, and then the value that is tattooing, so forth. This is a nice, efficient way to send data. That's why it's in the JSON format. It's a bit hard to work with. So we will transform, we will convert this JSON to a custom object because it's much easier to work with here in Power Automate Desktop. First of all, we only want to convert this JSON if the status code is 200. That is, if it's a success. So I go up to Actions and then I find an if. Drag in an if here. And then I say the first operand, click this little X here. Take the status code and say, if the status code is equal to 200, then we know it's a success. We can start the JSON parsing. To do so, we will find a convert JSON to a custom object. I'll drag that in, in here. The JSON that we want to convert. Well, that was the web service response which we got back from the Invoke web service, which is the API call. So I double click here and the variables produced that will be JSON as a custom object. I'll click save. 
Then again, let's try to run it. Now you will see the same as before, but we also have this JSON as custom object. I can double click here and now you see that it's a little bit more structured. Here we have the key value pairs again in the custom object. We have name and a value. So name, tattooing, just like you saw before, but now it's easier accessible. We also have some arrays down here and for example, residence that is or films. That is whenever this planet is in a film, it's in this array. So it's in Star Wars 1, 3, 4, 5, 6. So far, so good. Let's also try to output these things because usually you want to take the value from the API call that will be the response in the JSON format. You want to use those values in your flow and that is easy. So first let's just use a display message before we get more advanced. Here I have the display message. And let's always have that message box on top. We will not use the variables produced. Best practice is to disable it. If you want to see the full video about best practice in Power Automate Desktop, it's up here. Now back to our flow. The message to display. Let's just write out something like the name is. If I want to take the name from this web service response, then I need to click the X and move into the custom object. And then I need the key in hard brackets in single quotation marks. I say name like this. This is how I print the name. I can also let me just copy it because I'm lazy. Click enter new line. And we also need a hard bracket end. I can see like this. And let's say that we also want to write out the population. So the population is, and then we need to find the key for population. I think it's population we can check. So right now we will print the name and the population. Let's click save. And if I go in here, what you will see here is that we go into the JSON custom object, take the name that will be this. And we have the population, which here is 200,000. So far, so good. That's how you the name is tattoo and the population is 200,000. Click OK. That's how easy you do API calls. Let's try to make it a bit more advanced. Because let me minimize all of this. I prepared an Excel sheet called planets.xlsx. Here we have a sheet called planets with three columns. We have an ID that will be the ID, the planet ID. And now we want to get the name and population and careful. I also included the ID 85. That one will not exist. So we need to be able to handle those errors. Let's start simple. We will build this up step by step. I really hope you open up Power Automate Desktop and do this with me. You learn so much faster. First, I need the path to this. So here in Windows 11, I can right click choose copy as path. If I'm in Windows 10, I need to hold shift in and then right click. I say copy as path and I go to Power Automate Desktop. In the start of my flow, I will launch the Excel. Drag that in here in the beginning. We will not launch a blank document. I'll open the following document, control V and then remove the quotation marks. Power Automate Desktop will not use those. Then I can click Save and maybe I can scroll down and see the variables produced is called Excel Instance. Then I click Save. Now we just open up the Excel Instance. I also need to read the sheet data. And to do so, I will need to find a read from Excel worksheet and drag it in after the launch Excel. I'm working in the Excel instance. I want to read all available values from worksheet. An important one is in the advanced. I need to say first line of range contains column names. Let's also rename this to Excel data planets just to be a little bit more specific. It will also work if we named it Excel data. 
but it's always best practice to name your variables after the data they hold. Since this is data about planets, we choose this. We will also close the Excel instance here in the end. So I'll find a close Excel, drag it in here. We will choose to save the document. I will just override whatever is in it, but we could have chose to save to a new document. Then I need to say, um, I'll set a breakpoint here and the, at the invoke web service just to see that this works. I like to do this step by step to check that everything works. Here I'm checking that I can read from the Excel worksheet. It looks fine. You can see I have 10 rows, three columns and no error. I will stop this. Then I can also see that my Excel open. I can close it. I can remove this breakpoint. This was a point I set to make my automation stop here. So I don't need to run to everything here, which I knew worked. One important setting is in the launch Excel. That is the make instance visible. This will avoid a lot of errors in Power Automate desktop and Excel. So if you're unsure, just take this, then you will not see a lot of errors. Anyway, now we need to iterate through each one of the rows in Excel data planets. That was this 10 rows and three columns. If I double click it here, you can see it over here. We have the rows here, we have the name and the population. So far, so good. And then I find a for each, a for each loops a collection from start to finish. So I take this for each and drag it in after the read from Excel worksheet. What do we need to loop? Well, that was the Excel data planet. Double click here. And then I say current planet. I click save. What actions do I need to repeat? I need to make the API call and also need to pass it. So I click this in work web service, press shift on my keyboard. I click the end, then I drag everything in here. I could also have dragged the end down instead, but this works. So far, so good. Now you can see here, I say uh, for each current planet, that will be each one of the rows. So instead of making the same API call over and over, I will use whatever in this is in the current row. Let me double click here in the ID column. So I double click the invoke web service. And instead of this one, I will delete the one. And then I will say find the current planet. And I will take whatever is in the ID column. So hard bracket end, a single quotation mark, since this is a text in the column header, single quotation mark, and a hard bracket end. And then I click Save. Then I also need to say, I want to write this back to Excel. And where do I start in Excel? Right now, I have my data here. I'm iterating in the data table, which I read from the Excel. But there's no direct connection between the data table and the Excel. Since I want to start my data in row two, I make a counter. And that one looks like this. So I find a set variable, drag it in here. Let's call this row number. We will start in row two in Excel. So I say save. Then for each one of these, I will increase that number. So I can either use a set variable or an increase variable to do that. Let's use an increase variable today. We will use the row number and increase the number with one. Then I need to tell Power Automate Desktop, what do I need to do in all these iterations? Well, I want to print the name and the population in the correct columns. So let's open up the display message. Let's copy this expression and let's delete this display message. Now we will not have it displayed to the user. And instead, we will write to Excel worksheet. Drag it in after the convert JSON to custom object. 
what do I need to write? Well, the first one, that will be the name. Where do I need to write it? Well, that will be on the specified cell. What will be the column? Here, that the name should go into column B. And what row do I need to write it in? I created a variable for that called row number. So double click that. This one will change all the way down. And the smart thing here is that if the status code is not 200, that will be when we read an error. For example, when we try to find planet 85, then we will just jump over this and not write anything here. We will also need to write the population to the correct column. And again, I'm lazy, I'm an automation developer. So I say control C, control V, and let me go in here. And instead of name, I will say population and click save. And here you'll see that I write to column BB. The population was of course in column C. So far so good. Now we can save our flow because it's finished. We just need to test it to see that we can actually do what we are trying to accomplish with these actions. So 13 actions. In fact, only 11. I can click run here. We will do 10 API calls and hopefully have it written back into Excel. That's it. That's how quickly it goes. And this is smart because we don't need to work in the UI. Here you will have it. You will have all the names and the population and this one will not get filled. In case you want to do more advanced API calls, that will be with post. Then I created a nice advanced video where we will utilize the APIs from OpenAI. We will send data and have the OpenAI API to interpret it. I really think you should watch this. That will make you a lot better.